Uh, as you look at what the major market barometers are doing here, and the moves are significant but not outlandish, I would say, uh, are you at all surprised that on this news coming out of the White House and the reports from PBS about the situation uh, on the borders of Ukraine, are you surprised that the market hasn't reacted more dramatically? Well, the correction began in early January. And uh, in late January, we wrote a piece uh, saying that this correction, which we had expected, we were early making the call, of course, uh, but uh, we had expected this correction. We thought there'd be a, a head fake rally. That was covered in the financial press, like by Market Watch, pretty well. Um, this rally has expended itself, and then it's part of a whole waterfall process to a lower level. So we, we expected the correction to continue into early March. Um, our target's low 4,000s for the S&P 500. To put that in perspective, uh, Bitcoin would probably fall close to $30,000 as a price. Uh, it has about three times the sensitivity of the market. So we knew the catalyst going in, uh, the higher real interest rates, the tightening of financial conditions, the oil squeezing the consumer, uh, and all those themes to be coming to play. What, what, how would you characterize the appetite for risk right now? And is that at the heart of what we're seeing? In other words, uh, people are pulling away from high, high uh, value uh, stocks, high growth stocks. Uh, people are um, putting money into bonds, uh, at least today uh, they've, been, they've been doing that. Uh, and you have people pulling out, as you, and you think, uh, potentially out of Bitcoin, which is, I guess, uh, sort of a, a, a poster child for risk assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just a high-powered speculative instrument. It's not really a hedge except against the creation of money, uh, which is when it usually does best. Um, if you think about the risk appetite, uh, it has moved in a way that we would have expected, except that the Fed's credibility is more on the line this time. Um, that is to say that they have let inflation cat get out of the bag, and they've got to tighten. As they tighten into this squeeze and the geopolitical risk, uh, it's, a, it's an ugly picture for the market. You've got, you a, you've got an unusual stock. situation where the Fed is talking tightening at the same time as they are uh, engaging in quantitative easing, buying up bonds. Well, they're phasing out the quantitative yes. easing and actually talking about quantitative tightening, that's for sure. But they haven't done uh, it. But, uh, they haven't done it. Well... <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm no defender of the Fed. I think they did QE one year too long than they should have. Otherwise, we wouldn't have $1.6 trillion sitting in overnight reverse repo. Uh, but the Fed was too easy for too long. They've got to tighten. And, uh, and so they're locked in uh, into a path that we don't know the outcome, the end date of. If you think about 2004, 2006, and 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. the Fed did it for almost two years that would be devastating for the market by 2023. So we'll just have to see. Do you? Th there, there's been lots more talk this week of the possibility of a, a half point rise at that March meeting. Do you think that that is a what? What probability do you put on that? And does the probability of that come down if there is in fact an invasion of Ukraine? Well, the probability would come down if there's an invasion of Ukraine, although I'm not convinced that that is the outcome. I mean, some of the talk about getting out of Ukraine was just, you know, CYA after Afghanistan, not wanting Americans there. Uh, but the um, thing about what's going on with the risk on the geopolitical side, uh, you know, Russia is a country that with the GDP the size of Brazil, and we're all talking about it. I think that's what Putin wanted, and he's trying to secure one, a buffer zone, but also two, more sway over Eastern Europe. They'll fear him now. Uh, and so uh, if you look at it from that standpoint, he may win without having to invade uh, if, uh, you know, people meet some of the demands. Um, now, on the subject of, uh, of the Fed, they're not going to do a half a point. Uh, but they would be more likely to do quarter point, quarter point as you go through the back half and then hit that futures number, which is a good four or five rate hikes. Mm -hmm. uh, the squeeze point, the devastating point for the market is more like 2023. This is just a correction, recognizing that the punch bowl is being taken away. Right.